Thanks, Vicky. Um, yeah, so I'm Sandra from CITB, uh, and what I'm going to do today is just have a really quick gallop through. Um, CITB has recently released a um, research report, Building Skills into Net Zero. Um, thanks, Kat. Next slide. Brilliant. Um, so, as we've heard already, the UK is legally bound to uh, reduce emissions to net zero by 2050. Uh, and around all of the UK um, emissions, and uh, around half of the UK emissions can be influenced by construction. The recently published uh, Construction Leader Skills, Leadership Council Skills Plan is a result of the close collaboration between industry and government. And it recognises the potential opportunities that Net Zero presents to the sector, but it also recognises some of the skills challenges that we have to overcome to be able to deliver this. So more than almost any other industry, construction can transform the way the built environment works with the environment. We can drive waste management from design to delivery by looking at whole life uh, considerations and the circular economy, which has been mentioned already today. And we can reduce construction impact on the environment in terms of increasing biodiversity and decreasing pollution. Uh, and importantly for us as a sector, we need to, we can reform building safety and competency to keep the, the environment safe and to encourage more talent into the industry. Uh, so next slide, Cap. So having already said that around half of uh, the UK emissions come from construction, the focus of this report is delivering a net zero built environment by looking at operational carbon from energy consumption in buildings. And we know there are significant challenges to this uh, from delivering uh, low energy new buildings at scale and also large scale uh, programs of retrofit of existing building stock. So the skills needed to eliminate the emissions from construction activity and in body carbon in construction material. We haven't looked at this for, for this research, but we're just about to embark on a separate piece of research to look at in body carbon. Next slide. So some of the key findings from the research. Uh, buildings constructed now will be four times the performance of older buildings. So in terms of the emissions, the existing stock is responsible for 95% of the problem. Uh, and it's just estimated that 80% of homes and buildings in 2050 will be the ones that we're, we're all working and living in today. So that gives you an idea of the scale of the problem for retrofit. Um, but having said we haven't looked at embodied carbon already, I think when we start to look at uh, annual emissions from construction, incorporating embodied carbon, such as materials, products, transport, and, and you know, construction activities, uh, this picture could change quite considerably. So the, the three billion pound investment in the uh, Green Homes Grant is really just a drop in the ocean. Um, and it's, estimated that the total investment needed will be 45 billion pounds uh, it to increase energy efficiency get my teeth in straight to comply to net zero uh, and this this last um, start here seems to be one that the media is sort of um, grasped hold of up to 350,000 jobs will be needed to be created uh, by 2028 to deliver the pipeline of work. And this is an increase of 13% on the current size of the sector. Next slide, Carp. So the purpose of the research was to explore the skills implications um, to achieving net zero by 2050. Uh, the research and the steering group um, of representatives from Bayes, um, both of the governments of Scotland and Wales, and also the Climate Change Committee. And this steering committee both shaped both the research specification and its progression. And the forecasting model, which was developed um, to explore the impact of the potential net zero deployment trajectories on employment and skills requirement, 
and this was something that was previously un unavailable. So this really was the starting point. Um, next slide, Kat. Uh, this is an attempt at simplification of the uh, model. So some of the key points for the model, it, it's, it's really all encompassing. The model covers both uh, domestic and non-domestic work, it covers both new build and retrofit, it covers various pathways including hydrogen, fabric first, refits, heat pumps, heat net networks etc. So the main um, input, the model input was the climate change balance uh, scenario model um, and this is a deployment trajectory using a mixed approach incorporating moderate levels of energy efficiency uptake and a mix of low carbon heat technologies etc and it also incorporates the energy efficiency first approach um, other data that went into the forecasting model including CITB's uh, construction skills networking data uh, forecasting data and also ONC data so the outputs of that, from that, we can forecast or we, we've attempted to forecast um, employment profiles, qualification profiles, and also looking at the specialist skills needed. Uh, next slide, Kat. So apologies for this slide, it's not the best, but it does give you an idea of what the model came out with. So this slide um, shows the UK empl employment forecast based on the balance scenario. Um, and the energy efficiency first approach drives a steep increase that you can see there in employment up to a peak of about 350 uh, full-time workers in 2028. Then the model uh, shows uh, an, an initial quite steep drop in 2029. Uh, and this is mainly due to the completion of the majority of retrofit works employment. And then it's sort of sustained by the repair and replacement um, industry. A couple of key stats in that one, uh, construction project managers peak at about 86,000 in 2028. As I say, this is an all encompassing model. I think it raises a few more questions than it answers but you know that's what these things are for. Uh, next slide Kat. Uh, using that so using the same employment profile this is the um, qualification model um, and you can see the same um, trajectory 2028 peak and um, dropping off in 2029 um, but the model shows a weighting um, a qualifications that are sort of level three and below so with that uh, quite large scale drop off in 2029, uh, the numbers required will mainly fall on less skilled workers, so those qualified at level three and below. So this really highlights um, under this scenario that we need careful management of the transition to keep um, to ensure that workers are protected and have um, you know trans transitions to other work. Uh, and the next slide. And this one, same again, same um, profile, um, but this is looking at the more specialist training. Uh, a couple of examples from here, um, asbestos awareness training for retrofit, um, 15,000 by 2025, heat pump installers, 19,500 by 2028, and retrofit coordinators on this model peaking at just over 7,000 in 2027. Thanks, Kat. So the research threw up some key barriers. Um, this is four, by no means all of them, but this is four sort of key key barriers that we found. Um, so the demand for skills and training linked to net zero is low at the moment, which we know. So the lack of long term program of work is um, hindering employer investment in skills and, and employers need to be able to see a long-term pipeline and they need the security there to be able to um, so they can invest in the skills required to deliver uh, and the supply of um, training supply is not net zero ready which which we've heard this morning but from joe you know um, educators need um, 
some uh, assistance as well. So they they train the trainers uh, and they know what to put in, what the industry needs. Um, so the training sector needs to look at a more planned approach provision. So it balances the intermediate and future needs uh, and addresses identified skills gaps in, you know, things like retrofit and modern methods of constructions. And also we're looking at, you know, skills, clear pathways for new entrants with reskilling and upskilling as well. Uh, number three for me is a really important one. Um, the industry does not deliver sufficient quality consistently. So, you know, when we're looking at um, new technologies, certainly for retrofit, if the performance gap is not addressed, we won't reach net zero. So if the measures that are installed incorrectly or they're the wrong measures to be put in a scheme, therefore we don't meet the full performance, this will prevent us from getting to net zero. And I will also say an awful lot worse potentially from that, uh, from cost and the safety perspective. And, and again, for us as an industry, the poor reputation of the sector, sector limits the pipeline of talent. So it's even more critical now for us to, um, you know, improve in the reputation of the sector because we will be under increasing um, competition from energy and transport, just two sectors, who will be looking for people with similar skills. Next one, Kat. So as well, I think we've heard today that it's going to need collaboration. It, it, you know, there isn't one standalone sector that can do this. Um, so collaboration across the wider building built environment and also between industry and government and training providers is essential for reaching net zero. And the government has a key role, role to play in creating demand for skills by committing to a trajectory and setting associated long-term policies and funding so employers can see a long-term pipeline of work and encourage them to commit in investing skills and that's absolutely crucial. The training sector needs to be able to a uh, more planned approach in provision identifying and um, training and qualification gaps and facilitating updating of skills and technology and knowledge, crucially. And the industry needs to invest in the skills training, so they need to be ready to invest as well and confident to invest. So work on retaining skills within the sector, I think, has also been mentioned this morning. And, and working more collaboratively across supply chains and changing the industry culture again so it's attractive to new entrants. Um, that's so, as I said, this training sector needs to move to a more planned approach to provision that balances the uh, intermediate with the future needs and improve engagement crucially as well with small businesses so, um, so that they're well equipped to, de to deliver net zero. So this involves identifying and plugging the training and qualifications gaps for green skills, uh, working with the repair and maintenance and improvement sector and innovative businesses to rebalance the new entrance provision and improve focus on RMI and modern methods. Establish clear pathways for retrofit roles, I think that's important as well. I mean, again, it, it's, it's why should we do that? what's the future we've seen from that the model that we think there's going to be um, a severe drop off I, i'm not sure about that i have to admit but you know that's what the model's shown us um developing training to support reskilling to areas of emerging demand uh, and i think we've got to be sort of we've got to try to be quick to uh, react to this uh, and again as I keep saying, develop training to help people affected in the near term by the impact of COVID, but also in the longer term as a result of declining sectors, because that's going to be an issue as well due to decarbonisation. Next one, Cap. So CITB are already uh, doing a number of things. We have a number of things in place which can um, help 
build net zero, zero skills um, through partnership with initiatives such as supply chain sustainability school, which are absolutely excellent, and transforming construction program. We'll continue to build industry capacity for transformation, improvement and change. And we also support the industry's fairness, inclusion and respect program to make construction workplaces a better place for everyone and to open construction to a broader pool of talent who may not have even thought of construction industry before. And CITB have already funded the Offsite Ready project to encourage the uptake of modern methods of construction and digital co con technologies through training courses. Um, and th th this um, this goes back to one of Joe's uh, again, you know, making sure that educators are equipped to be able to train for net zero. These projects have produced um, uh, modules and training for college tutors. So that they're equipped with the knowledge as well but essentially as well, well we will continue to ensure that our key funds such as skills and training funds meet the emerging skills needs uh, associated with retrofit programs and um, last like that uh, um so yeah that was a really really quick gallop through the research report um the reports are available on our website. There's um, there's a summer report and the full report. And for this one, I really, really would recommend reading the full report. It's a couple of hundred pages long, but it's worth a read. Um, and personally, I think it's probably one of the best reports, research reports we've had out in a long while. So yeah, just leaves me to say thank you for listening. Thanks very much.